regarding Chris Cabber. An unfortunate um, situation where Chris Cabber was driving his car back somewhere and he was followed by armed police. Um, uh, a situation occurred where the armed police tried to get the car to stop. Chris Cabber didn't stop and they ended up shooting him in a car and unfortunately he passed away on the scene. On the surface of it, when I first heard about the situation or this particular case, I think it happened in 2002, my initial reaction was that, oh, fuck the police. Because if you know anything about, in, if you know anything about, if you know anything about driving black around the world, especially in Western world, especially in the UK, especially in London, you would know how annoying the police are when it comes to black people driving around in nice cars. They seem to have a particular boner for stopping us. It just is. Anybody that I've known that's black or brown, that drives a semi-nice car, they sometimes get stopped within a week, sometimes like 10 times, if not more. It's fucking annoying. It's embarrassing. Um, and it can just really make you feel like shit, really, to be honest. You're seeing guys on the side of the street getting searched, cut, you know, pe police officers, you know, tearing through their entire fucking car, thinking they're going to find something. It's flipping crazy. So when I first heard the story, I was like, fuck the police in that regard. But then the more you start to read the story, and, and of course, when the other bit of the story was that allegedly Chris Cabber's Rolex watch that he was wearing at the time had was not found in the car or was not found on his person. So there's allegations that the police involved in the shooting of Chris Cabber had taken the watch as well, which is obviously uh, a wild situation. But now that the case has been concluded and the police officer that shot Chris Cabber has been found innocent or has been cleared of murder, let's say, not innocent, but cleared of murder, more details have now tried to come out about this issue, about what happened. And there's now video footage, body cam video footage, that I think makes you understand why the police felt it was necessary to shoot the kid the way that they did because allegedly they shot him once in the head right and now you can see why because the way that they were painting it online made it seem like this was a racial attack type of thing and he was an unjust shooting and bloody blah, blah 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 but given the kid's prior history um now we're learning that he was a a very um what you call it high-ranking member in some gang that he was in from brixton um allegedly they're also alleging now that a week before he got shot by the police he shot some rival gang member at a rave somewhere like the, all these deals coming out so basically you know he was no angel and he had previous so the police were stopping him not for a routine stop they targeted him because you know in the uk or in london you can't have guns and shit obviously so if you do have one there's like a eminent threat to safety the police do come down on you they do come down on you like a ton of bricks armed police don't fuck around if you if they hear or if they know through their investigations that you might have a firearm or something they really do come down on you a ton of bricks so he was being followed by armed police and he probably should have been aware of the situation that he was in and probably complied and he probably would have still lived but the fact that he didn't comply and try to ram into the police is probably what led to his death unfortunately so as much as i would like to say fuck the police and usually i do in in most situations because the police can be fucking annoying and they can do some really deplorable downright disgusting and evil things i think in this situation it's looking more and more likely like the chris cabba shooting was justified as much as i don't want to say that it is looking likely so let's actually read the article this is courtesy of sky news it says chris cabba's family vowed that they won't be silenced after the met office who shot him cleared of murder Let's play the bit of the video here. Continue Park Road, continue in southbound. And pass, what's your ETA? 30 seconds. Through South London, a convoy of police cars followed the suspect's Audi Q8. It had been linked to a shooting the night before. Standing by for strikes, stand by, stand by. When it turned into a side street, police launched a plan to stop it okay, and remove the driver. On to Coastal Gardens. Do it here. It's a in line, in line, in Boxed in, surrounded by armed police, the Audi rammed forwards. Oh, police! Your hands! Officers body worn cameras and dash cams caught the speed, the noise and the drama of what was happening. Watch yourself. The suspect's Audi drove backwards. Mind them, mind them, he's gonna try and go. After 17 seconds, an officer fired one shot. The jury was shown a graphics version of the movement of the firearms officers. Blake is the yellow dot. He ends up in front of the suspect's car from where he takes the final shot. The officer said he feared the car would Damn. hit and kill one of his colleagues. 
He shot the driver in the forehead and killed him. The suspect was Chris Cabber, 24 and about to be a father. It wasn't his car. There was no weapon inside it. The next day, as police investigated the shooting, mm -mm. Mr Cabber's distraught family went to the scene. The report said that it was a pursuit. Where mm. was the pursuit? He was boxed in. The pursuit where? You know, and why did they shoot him in his vehicle with the windows up? I don't get it. Police! In London and elsewhere, campaigners looked for an explanation. The superstar rapper Stormzy joined a demonstration outside Scotland Yard. Two years later, Mr Cabber's parents were at the Old Bailey to watch their son's killer in the dock. A rare thing, the firearms officer charged with murder. A court ban on his image, but not his name, Martin Blake, aged 40. Damn. In court, the prosecutor said the officer had no reason to fire his gun. He'd given false statements and exaggerated the danger. Mr Cabber said the prosecutor had ignored police shouts to stop and that made the officer angry, frustrated and annoyed. The officer told the jury he felt none of that. He was filled with dread, he said, because the driver was trying to use his car to escape. He thought one of his colleagues was about to die. So he fired to incapacitate the driver and stop the car. In the wake of the Chris Cabber shooting, the Met Commissioner, Sir Mark Rowley, called for better legal protection for officers who use force on duty. They are subject to the law like everyone else. There should be a, a double standard. Uh, I know the Commissioner's talking about um, extra protection for arms officers, but that, again, is sending the wrong signal. You cannot have one law for one set of people and another law for others. It has to be consistent. Tony Long is one of four on-duty officers in recent times to be tried for murder or manslaughter. He shot dead a suspect in North London nearly 20 years ago. He was acquitted. We ask those police officers to look after us. Um, and so if we train them to use these varying degrees of force, ending up potentially with lethal force, then I think we should be not cutting them some slack, but we should have some, a better understanding. And you can't just automatically say, well, that police officer shot someone. The jury has delivered its verdict on the shooting of Chris Cabber, but the debate over the police use of lethal force will continue. So, yeah, a hard one to really wrangle, but from what I've been able to observe and what I've been able to read, it does seem like a complicated one. It does seem a lot more complicated than people are making out because on one side of things, looking at the, there's a video, there's like a graphic that they use in the court case where that's that's the bit that kind of, kind of you know, I was a little bit dubious about because the graphic they use in the court case to kind of, you know, um, reenact what happened, it shows the police officer in yellow who then took the lethal shot. But if I'm if I'm to be, you know, if I'm, a, if I'm interpreting it correctly, he looked like he was maybe in a safer position. Because Chris Cabo was trying to ram his car through two cars. He was unable to, and he was basically pinned in. He couldn't have gone anywhere. So the fact that the police officer at the front felt like his life is in danger is a bit weird because no one else that was on either side of the road took that shot. He did. Whereas he was in the safest position, really, given where, given the proximity of the cars, given the likelihood of what would have occurred, it's unlikely that he would have been in danger. It's most likely the guys on the either side of the road, if you would have continued ramming, the cars maybe would have flipped. They would have drove into the curb. They could have got injured. But the guy in the front, he was probably in the best position ever to kind of see what was going on and be understanding. So I would have understood more if the guys on the pavements of either side of the road would have taken the shot. But I still think in that situation, there was no need to take the shot. But the police officers didn't have any knowledge that he didn't have a gun in the car. They were responding to him or they were tailing him and they were pursuing him because they had had in previous intelligence that he was involved in the shooting a week before. That's why they were chasing him in the first place. That's why they were pursuing him, sorry, in the first place, because he was allegedly involved in a previous shooting with a gang member where he shot somebody in a rave, I think. I might have the footage there. And um, I don't think the person died, but they was investigating that. So they, were, they want to know that there was a gun in there. So they shot him because they were assuming there would be a gun in there. They didn't want to, you know, there's no such thing as like shooting somebody in the shoulder and trying to immobilize them because you never know. They might have a gun in there. Or obviously, be able to kind of injure you and your colleagues or somebody um, from the public. 
So he's trying to neutralize the threat as best as possible. I just think the guy in yellow, the, the yellow dot position guy, probably, in my opinion, wasn't justified giving his position to shoot the kid. I don't think so personally, because if the, if we're taking this ramming graphic to be serious and to be real, then I think he was in the best position to not get shot personally. I think that guy in yellow was in the best position not to get shot. You see him here, right? That's the dot there. The guy in yellow was the one that allegedly fired a shot. But all of these guys here, the pink, the green, the blue, the purple, they were in way more danger to getting shot because he was already pinned in. One car's already diagonal. There was no way that kid was going to force that car through. It wasn't going to go through it. So for that guy to take that shot, I felt was excessive, but he wasn't to know the kid didn't have a gun in there. So he's looking after himself and the safety of his friends or his colleagues and obviously anyone in the public who might have been able to roll by as well. Um, but the way that they were painting in the media, like he was just an innocent kid who was just driving back home and the police chased him and he didn't stop and then they just shot him, isn't the truth though, isn't it? Because there's context to it. The context to it is, unfortunately, it does appear like he was a gang member. And he was involved in a pretty dicey situation, which I've got video footage of it here, courtesy of the Police UK on Twitter. It says, breaking news, Chris Cabra allegedly shot a rival gang member in front of revelers at an East London nightclub six days before he was killed by police. A court order prevented the media from reporting this revelation until the conclusion of the Martin Blake trial. So allegedly, they're saying this guy here um, which you can see in the um, in the CCTV footage that's behind the he's wearing a shiesty. They're allegedly saying this this was this was the kid involved. And another detail it says Chris Cabba's family sought to suppress reporting of this previous conviction, gang association, and his alleged involvement in nightclub shooting to avoid prejudice of the jury, which is pretty wild because the jury and everybody else involved, the public as well have been led to believe that the, this was some sort of like racially motivated attack or some or basically a racially motivated execution. But in reality, it seems like this kid was about that life. And unfortunately, he paid the ultimate price. And I think that's just, you know, that's the fact of the matter. It's unfortunate. No one wants to see anybody die. I think it was only like 26 or something. But a part of living that lifestyle is knowing that most likely you end up in prison or dead, either by the, you know, the hands of your enemies, your partners, or unfortunately law enforcement. And this is one of those situations. Um, and if you scroll down, it says, Mr. Justice Gross presided over Blake's trial, rejected the family's application for the Old Bailey this morning and extended the reporting restrictions. The jury wasn't told about this and the firearms officer Martin Blake didn't know that Cabba was driving the Audi when he shot the, when he shot the driver. Okay, that makes it weird then. That detail is a bit wild. They're saying here in this article that the firearm officers didn't know that Chris Cabba was driving the vehicle. That's weird though. So why were firearms officers responding to somebody not stopping? Doesn't make any sense. Usually if police officers, usually just usually it's regular police officers who are driving around, right? Making sure people have their, you know, whatever, and they pull you over, they're the ones gonna pull you over. But why, why was there an armed response unit following this kid if they didn't know who he was? That's obviously a lie. The jury was, wasn't told about this. The firearms officer, Martin Blake, didn't know it was Chris Cabba driving. Of course you knew. That's why you were. That's why you were all armed up in the car. Like, how does that make sense? You see, this is where it gets fishy. As much as I want to, as much as I want to say this seems like a justified shooting, those type of details seem fishy. Because, like, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you just admit that? Yes, it was Chris. Why wouldn't you, as a police officer, admit that you had intelligence that told you that this kid that was involved in the shooting six days ago may be the one driving that car? That would give you justified means for shooting him right or if it went to that end because he has a history of firearms so in that situation you're approaching it differently if you're approaching somebody you know for a traffic violation the police are very very dodgy man like this doesn't sit well with me that detail is such a weird lie they didn't know Cabra was driving the audi then why were you following him with guns in or trying to get him to pull over anyway this is the video footage from the rave um that's on the screen at the moment I don't think there's any sound to it, innit? I don't think there's sound. It's just CCTV footage from a club. It says, blue arrow, Chris Cabba. Red arrow is the rival and pink circle is the gun. So this is a clip that shows Chris Cabba in some nightclub somewhere in East shooting his gang rival. Um, there's a kid there in red, in red arrow. Chris Cabba rocks up, you know, moving very shifty, by the way. If I, if I would have saw him, I would have ran because you definitely could tell he's on bad timing. And, you know, he just pulls out his gun slowly and points in the direction of the guy. 
and shoots, but he doesn't pull it out properly. He, does, he kind of puts it towards his abdomen in a way. A very weird way to shoot somebody. It's almost like he's trying to shoot him on a sly. Then the right, the guy runs away. Everyone, everyone probably hears a shot and is trying to run out the way. And then Chris Cabba puts the gun allegedly back into his little mini bag, his little pouch, and he walks off with a glove. So yeah, so allegedly he was a real shoot. He was a real stepper, man. He was a real stepper. He was a real stepper. He was out here doing. <laughs> he was out here doing shootings in like clubs and shit. He was <laughs> moving reckless. Um, the Daily Mail reporting police marksman Martin is having to live with hiding after a £10,000 reward was offered by gangsters anyone prepared to kill him in revenge for the death of Chris Cabba. The devoted partner and father of to be Cabba was banned from contacting the mother of his unborn child under domestic violence protection order. Uh, <laughs> dicey, dicey. So what? He was beating up his girlfriend. He was about to have his child. And he allegedly was trying to shoot rival gang members in clubs. I don't know, man. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's the life you leave, bro. I don't know. I don't know what to say. RIP to the kid and stuff. Sports guy to his family. I'm sure that they're not happy and stuff. But hey, I can't, I can't put on my fucking Wakanda outfit. I can't put on my BLM shirt and start marching for this. Because this guy was, you know, living a lifestyle that would, some would say an outcome like this was probably inevitable, whether at the hands of his enemies, law enforcement, or somebody that he calls a brother. That's just the way it goes when you live this sort of life. It is what it is. So I don't know, man. I don't know if I should be protesting. I'm not too, I'm not too sure if I should be cutting up, um, you know, cardboard boxes, you know, serial cardboard boxes and writing, you know, fuck the police and shit and going to, you know, march at fucking um, the House of Commons. I don't think that's the right thing for me to do personally. <laughs> because it seems like this kid was um was on was on bad timing, you know? He was on bad timing and unfortunately he paid the ultimate price in that situation. Um there's something to be said for him maybe just stopping when the police officer tried to pull him over in the first place. Uh, he probably should have just stopped. Um but obviously, you know, he knows what he was involved in. He knows what they were trying to pull him over for. He probably didn't want to go without a fight. And, you know, he went out probably the way he probably would have wanted to go out, innit? He tried to go away, he didn't get away, shot him in the head boom it is what it is but um r.i.p to chris cover and um i guess in this situation force and feelings got with the police officer i guess because he's gonna be living under fear he probably might have to quit his job and change his identity and stuff given what's happened and the fact that they revealed his identity but i don't think the way they're painting chris cover out to be is actually the truth you know it seems like he was a lot more um i don't know there was a lot more uh there's a lot more history going on there here's another clip here of his family Let's hear his family. I'm sure the family, as per usual, when it comes to kids involved in organized crime and shit, they're going to have, they're going to take zero accountability for the lifestyle he led. They're going to paint him out to be an angel, church going, God fearing, devoted father to, like, you know, standard shit in it. It's so, so annoying, this sort of stuff. It's really an, an, an insult to people's intelligence. No one's saying because you're a gang member, you should be, people, police should be allowed to just kill you. But there is context, you know, there is nuance. Let's not make it seem like he was gone. He was on his way to football training, you know, and and he just got shot in the head randomly. Like, but let's see, let's hear what the family have to say. Let's see what Chris Cabba's family have to say about this. We'll continue fighting for Chris, for justice, and for real change. Chris's life mattered, and nothing, absolutely nothing, can take that away from us. Today is a devastating moment for the Cabba family, our community, and the nation. Martin Blake's acquittal nation. is painful proof that our lives are not valued by the system. The fight for accountability, for justice, and racial equity has spanned decades. And we honor all those who have contributed to that fight, those that came before us. Racial equity? Get Gaza? Is that what we're doing? We're trying to champ. We're trying to scream for racial equality, diversity, and inclusion, off the back of an alleged gang member getting shot. Really, by the police? Is that what we're trying to do? We're trying to use the death of a of a shooter, right? <laughs> Whatever gang he was from, I think I read somewhere like six, seven in Brixton. Whatever set he was from, we're trying to use the death of a shooter as a reason. Oh my God, man! My people, man! My people, my people, my people, my people whose shoulders we stand upon today. Despite this verdict, our commitment remains unwavering. 
for the Kaba family, justice was never about this verdict alone. They were clear from the beginning. This was always about more, about real systemic change that would have prevented Chris from being killed and that can prevent other people from being killed in this country by the police. In you know what? You know what would have prevented him getting knocked? You know what would have prevented him not being killed? Maybe uh, not being part of an organised gang. Maybe. 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 Maybe not deciding to be the shooter of that organised gang. Maybe. Maybe not going on ride outs. Maybe. Maybe you're not trying to assassinate his rival gang member in a packed club and potentially harming other innocent people who had nothing to do with it. Maybe. Maybe. Bareface shootings in clubs, you know, where they have cameras and shit and people, witnesses might have made him a target for other members, other rival gangs, and most importantly, law enforcement. Maybe. Who are already systemically racist as it is, right? We have a law enforcement in this country that's already systemically racist as it is. Then you're just giving them a reason. You're just giving them a reason to, you know, to rock your snot box, as Hassan Carmel would say. Makes no sense to me, but what do I know? In the future, this is a fight that we as a campaign will not abandon. This outcome reinforces the harsh reality that police can kill without consequence. No one can be safe while the police can kill with impunity. We stand with the families who lost loved ones before Chris. Do they even kill with impunity too? Um, all these words, what does that mean? Are the police, go in, especially in the UK, this is, not North, this is not North America. Are the police going around and just murking people innocently, randomly, at will, without no consequences? There is a real need for consequences, for, you know, mistakes that the police make or errors, or just crimes that they commit flat out. There is a need for it, right? There is a need for it. Let's not kind of go then. And the fact that this went to trial is probably proof that the prosecution felt like there was enough evidence that would mean that the, there would be a possibility he'd be found guilty, right? I would imagine. I don't think this would have gone to court in the first place or gone to trial if there wasn't enough evidence that would put the officer in a bit of a weird place. Because even though, even that even that sentence where, oh, the officer didn't know it was Chris Cabot, it's like, mm, yes, you did. Why are you lying for? That's why you're following him. It's okay, because that's what you're meant to be doing as armed response, right? Or whatever. You, you, you know, th th there's a whole division of the police where they basically look at, you know, gun crime and shit. So I'm assuming they have a handle on who in the country has guns or has been involved in instances that involve firearms. And they probably respond to those people differently than they respond to me if I cross the street without looking both ways or if I'm riding my bike on the pavement. That's how it should be, fine. But, but... But let's chill out. Police aren't just going around bursting through people's doors and just knocking them off. Let's relax. Let's relax. Who are still seeking justice. This verdict is not the end. It only strengthens our resolve. Now is the time to join a fight for a future where justice and accountability are the norm. Accountability. Accountability. Bless this family. I know they're probably suffering and my heart goes out to them because to them, he was just Chris Cabber. But come on, man. Accountability. Come on, man. Come on. We have to do better as people. Accountability. We have to do better as people. Maybe they're in a weird position because maybe he was the main breadwinner, oddly enough. Maybe through his dealings and through his businesses and through his moves and shit. Maybe in a weird way, you know, even though he was involved in some badness, as most, you know, guys would know that are from African, Caribbean and, you know, brown sort of backgrounds and stuff. When they've got kids who are involved in bad stick crime and stuff, sometimes the parents and guardians can look the other way because he's, you know, he's topping up the power key. He's putting money in the gas card. He's buying groceries. He's giving you a couple of bills every month and stuff. So you can look the other way. So maybe it's hurting a lot that way because the main breadwinner of the family has been taken away. Right. I understand that. And just the pain of losing a son, a brother, a nephew, an uncle, blah, blah, blah. But come on, man. Let's be real. Let's be real. Let's be real. What did you expect? It's part of a, like, come on. Guy was in a gang. Like, come on, man. Allegedly, he was doing ride outs. Like, come on, man. In, in packed nightclubs. Come on. Lord knows what he was doing previously that he, that he might have gotten away with. That wasn't his first shooting, I'm assuming. Come on, man. He was one of the rare people in London, one of the rare kids in London who has one of those side bags and it doesn't just have a vape or some joints in there or some Vaseline. He actually had allegedly a gun in there, which is not common in London. One of the rare people that actually was carrying a fucking blicky in there. Come on, what do you expect? Accountability, you know? Let's take accountability for maybe not 
pulling our son to one side and telling him to maybe stop this lifestyle because it's only going to end one way. Because look, his life got robbed. He's only 25 and you know, it ended like that. Come on, accountability. That's a bit rich. And no one is above the law. Today, as a community, we are reminded that there is nothing for us in this criminal legal system. We have been shackled until now, told not to speak, not to talk about what the family was experiencing. You can't talk because it's an open court case. Are we trying to, are, are we trying to say that's racism now? The court's preventing you from speaking on an open court case is a form of racism. Not to jeopardize this case. Many of us who have worked on policing for years understood that there was very little faith we could invest in this court because it has never, ever produced a successful murder conviction of any on-duty police officer. That obviously is something that needs to be investigated on, right? If from all the cases of a police officer murdering somebody on duty, there's never been one guilty charge. I'm not sure if that's true, but let's say, let's take what she's saying is true. Let's say in all the police involved shootings in the UK, there's not been one guilty conviction. That's very suspect because I don't believe every interaction the police has with somebody that they deem to be a suspect is going to be just or is going to be all the way kosher. There's going to be mistakes made. You're telling me there's never been one mistake in a police involved shooting. I don't believe that. I don't believe it in the slightest. So that obviously needs to be looked at. But this particular case, come on, man. Come on. Yes, there was a hope, potentially, that Martin Blake could be the first because he shot Chris in the forehead. Now, if that's not an execution, I don't know what is. But, but what they meant to do, though, because I remember I said that once in the stream and somebody set me right. I think I was the one person said that. I was like, oh, why don't American police... um. Why, why don't they um what's that word called why don't they disarm right i think i said that once in the in the stream i was like oh why don't shoot an arm shoot a leg and i think somebody set me right on a random show like um that's not how it works like you're not you know what i mean like when a gun is pulled out they're not they're not aiming to kind of you know stop you and to kind of you know pause for a moment when the, when the gun comes out that's lethal force so when you see the gun you should know where that where that can go and you should comply with everything that police officer saying and i think somebody also said there's no guarantee that if they shoot you in the shoulder that you'll live anyway or in a leg. It could hit an artery. And also, there's no guarantee that they couldn't put themselves in harm way. Say they try to incapacitate you and shoot you in the arm like they do in movies or in the knee or whatever. But then you have a gun in your hand and you shoot them back and you shoot them in the head. Then what? You know? Then the police officer is the one in the, in the wrong. Or the police officer is the one that made the fatal error by allowing you the opportunity to still get your gun. So they can't they can't run that risk, you know, because, you know, at first, their first duty, I guess, is to the public and to themselves and their colleagues and shit in those situations. And if you're not complying, you know, what else are they going to do? High pressure situation, you know, in that situation we saw, you know, it's late at night, loads of sirens, cars ramming into each other, blah, blah. Loads of happening in, in you, you have to make a decision in split time. It's really difficult to do, but I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a mad one. It's a mad one since we can't rely on this system we are forced as a community to continue to build our own alternatives to build real safety real peace real justice and really deal with harm and conflict in our communities because we cannot rely on police to do so the only thing that the police deliver to our communities is pain pain and trauma that is inflicted upon us and we will not stand for it we haven't stood for it before and we will continue to fight until our last breath until we are in our graves and from the afterlife as ancestors we will strengthen the next generation so that they can fight because unfortunately we believe that our grandchildren will have to continue fighting our grandchildren will be fighting we are the ones that are the children of those who fought before us 53 years ago almost to the day dark as how and the mangrove nine were on trial here in the old bailey and they delivered a speech in there that no one has ever heard before. They told us on that day that this wasn't about the law. It was about humanity. Humanity. Who wants to live in a society where the police can shoot unarmed people in the forehead and be faced with no consequences? Martin Blake didn't spend but a second in a handcuff, not a second in a jail cell. Whilst our community, our youth, are locked up en masse under legislation like joint enterprise for things they have not done. It's very clear to us 
especially as a black people, but for all poor people who are affected by these injustices, that our lives will never matter to this system. But it's fine. We matter to each other, we matter to ourselves, and we will fight for our rights. Don't get me wrong. The the, the, the shooting in the head thing, I, I get it, it's execution thing, but what what is the better alternative? Him getting shot in the, in the chest, three shots to the chest, three shots to the abdomen. Like, what's a better way? You know, like sh he, he got, he got. Like, I know it's bad. I know it, it's, you know, it's a, it's bad, but it's just bad all around. The kid shouldn't have been in that situation in the first place. If he maybe would have just stopped and didn't try to ram his car through two police officers, maybe that guy wouldn't have been put in a position to try to shoot him in the way he did. But it's just very sus how the police handled it. Not gonna lie, very, very sus because they're trying to make it seem like it was a routine traffic stop that turned into something ugly. Which, which makes them look worse, really, because they have every reason. They, they, they'd have more of a right to say we shot him because we knew that was Chris Cabber driving that car. The car also wasn't his. We don't know what's inside there. Bloody blah, blah, blah. He's not, he's not, he's, he's not, he's, he's resisting arrest. Previous shootings that linked to him that we haven't, that we haven't been able to, you know, confirm, but we're 99% sure it's probably with him involved. Like that, that would give them reason to like, engage in that sort of situation in with that kind of force but to lie about it seems odd the lying seems odd like what are they hiding there but the refusal for the family to accept that their family member was also part of an organized crime gang and maybe could have put himself in a situation himself by the actions that he has done in the past and by who he associated with is really annoying too it's insulting to everyone's intelligence really it's like come on man come on you're acting as if like he was on his way to uni. Let's be real. Let's be real. You know? But hey, sensitive topic, sensitive situation. I hope all involved are able to heal from it. Probably not though, given the severity of the situation. And um, yeah, I think the protections against the police are stupid though. This the, 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 the police chief was like, oh, we need more protection for the police. Like, bro, how much protection do you need? If, if what that girl's saying is true, that in all the UK shootings, in all the shootings in the UK involving police, no police officer has been, you know, convicted. Like, that's all the protection you need. That's proof that most, if not all police officers always get off. So what protections more do they need? <laughs> what are you talking about? More protections, you know, like what? Um, but yeah, you know, again, the, the, the mum's going to feel, you know, the mum's always going to see their son as their son. She's not going to ever see them as a gang member, but I think it needs to be more of an acknowledgement of you know the lifestyle this kid lived and um you know maybe that affected what happened to him and he ended up unfortunately paying the ultimate price you know but r.i.p chris Caber anyway same way and hopefully some lessons can be learned from this but let's not make this out to be oh this is a racist this is a racist attack and shit because i don't think it was personally i think it was dodgy I think there was some dodginess involved there. Don't get me wrong. The missing Rolex is something that also doesn't sit right with me, if that story is true. But let's call a spade a spade, you know? Let's call a spade a spade. Let's, for the love of God, call a spade a spade. But again, RIP to Chris Cabber. Thoughts and feelings go out to his family and friends. I'm sure it's a tough situation for them and everything that's going on over there.